Hello, my name is Luinos Kovalauskas and I'm a Technical Alliances Manager here at VMware. Today, I will be sharing VMware View Backup Best Practices. So today's session is broken down into four parts. First, I'll give a brief background on VMware View architecture and I will describe all View infrastructure components. Then I will cover the inner workings of View and will explain data flow within View infrastructure. In the third session, I will dive into view backup best practices and guidelines. I will also cover backup strategies for link clone desktops. And lastly, we will overview backup restore steps and best practices. So, VMware view architecture. Most of you have already seen this picture before. This is basically an outline of all VMware view components. VMware view manager is the heart of the infrastructure. It brokers all of the user sessions. Users might be connecting using, using thin, thick, or zero clients, such as PC, Mac, or tablet device. All of the sessions are being brokered to the virtual desktops. Virtual desktops run on VMware vSphere virtual platform. VMware View desktops can be provisioned by utilizing VMware View Composer, which is a crucial component if you want to save storage space for your VDI de development. It also can speed up your virtual desktop provisioning and save some disk space. Some of the folks might be using ThinApp for application provisioning, which provide, proves to be an extremely useful tool for provisioning applications to thousands of desktops without any application installation hurdles. So let's jump to the installation steps. Now let us talk about installation sequence so you can understand what view components gets installed in what order. As we have mentioned before, VMware View utilizes VMware vSphere platform. First of all, you would want to set up Active Directory, DNS, and vSphere servers. Once you have those components installed, you can go ahead and start installing VMware View Connection Server. Some of the customers who want to secure their environment choose to install Secure Server. Secure Server acts as a gateway server um, and can be used to create DMZ zone for your virtual desktops. Once you have all, all four components installed, the next step is to set up virtual desktop infrastructure. VMware best practice is to set up a separate vSphere infrastructure for hosting virtual desktops as shown in the picture. The reason behind is pretty trivial. We want to separate virtual desktop and server workloads as they are quite different in nature and require different storage solutions. VMware View Composer can be installed on vSphere server to allow link clone desktops. The beauty of link clone desktops is the storage consolidation. The other improvement customers implement is by using solid state drive storage or SSDs for speeding up desktop provisioning and boot, boot time. Once you have your environment configured, you can start configuring your virtual desktop pools. Once desktop pools are configured, you can start provisioning desktops to your customers. And of course, your customers can start connecting to their virtual desktops. So let's take a look at the uh, data flow within view environment so you can get a better understanding how view works and how data flows within view infrastructure. This will give you a better understanding of how to implement backup and understand which component has to be installed after or has to be backed up after which. So let's take a look at the, uh, at the data flow. In this scenario, we have a customer who wants to connect to his virtual desktop. So let's check how his desktop gets provisioned. When a user wants to connect to view, he launches view client on his machine, which attempts to authenticate the user against the view manager server. So first server, the session authentication request will hit will be view secure server, which acts as a PCR IP gateway. Secure server will forward session to the view manager and view manager will talk to Active Directory in order to authenticate a user. Once user gets authenticated, view server will return a list of entitled desktops to the user. User will go ahead and select the desktop he wants, or in some instances, view can get view can be configured to provision desktop automatically. 
So View Manager can also pre-provision a virtual desktop. In our scenario, we are showing Link Clone Desktop being created. So once a new desktop is ready, View Manager can provision that desktop to a new user. In some scenarios, companies also use local mode enabled desktops, allowing users to run their view desktops locally on their PCs or laptops. And so it, usually it's also, such situations are where a user needs to have his desktop accessed when he's offline. So in such scenarios, when a user needs to access his virtual desktop when he's offline, um, View Manager would ask Transfer Server to check out an image from the vSphere where a uh, virtual machine would get copied to Transfer Server, packaged, encrypted, and pushed to the thick client with local mode enabled so that a user can run the virtual machine or virtual desktop on his uh, uh, laptop or PC locally while he's, he's um, offline. Now that you have a good understanding of how the components work and what's the workflow, let's jump into backup guidelines and best practices. The overview has three critical components required for the infrastructure to function. First component is VM Review Connection Server. And as we mentioned, this component brokers all virtual desktop sessions. Second component, critical component, is Virtual Center Server with the optional View Composer Server component installed. And the third one is Active Directory because VMware View Infrastructure heavily relies on Active Directory for user authentication. And sometimes Active Directory Server might act as a DNS server. So let's check Active Directory and View Connection Server backup requirements. As we have mentioned before, View relies on AD LDS or Atom database for storing all configuration data. VMware recommends backing up this database on a daily basis since data in this database is critical. View Connection Server itself does not change data as frequently and can be backed up on a monthly basis. For Active Directory VMware highly recommends implementing highly available infrastructure or backing up servers at least daily following Microsoft's best practices, Microsoft's best backup practices. Now let's take a look at the VMware Virtual Center Server component and View Composer. VMware Virtual Center and View Composer are critical View components which would require backup. Although View Composer is an optional component and is not necessary for VMware View to function. However, if View Composer is being utilized and Link Clone desktops are being provisioned, View Composer becomes a critical component. View Composer enables you to use Link Clone virtual machines for View. VMware recommends backing up View Composer and Virtual Center databases on a daily basis, or better, implementing highly available database infrastructure following database vendors' best practices. In the scenario where stateless desktop architecture is implemented, customer needs to back up only master image virtual machine. And I will talk about the desktop deployment scenarios in the next slide. So traditional VDI virtual desktops are desktops where each user desktop is a separate virtual machine image. In such scenarios, we recommend using VADP enabled third party backup solutions. Um, those solutions are available from our partners. You can also utilize old fashioned backup agents for backing up your virtual machines. Also, PowerShell can be utilized for some backup management automation. View Composer enabled desktops have quite different storage architecture. This backup strategy should be well thought through. Parent image is critical for View Composer since all the desktops are pointing to the single file or single image. Should stateful desktop be implemented utilizing View Composer, VMware recommends implementing highly available storage. In a stateless desktop infrastructure, loss of a parent image or link clone is not really critical since desktop can always be 
recreated from a master image of a virtual machine backup. VMware recommends utilizing backup agents for backing up stateful link clone virtual machine, thus creating a single image on your backup storage. When restoring such backups, administrators can utilize PowerShell scripts to add restored virtual desktops as a separate virtual machine images. And of course, you can use PowerShell for automation. So now that we have covered all the Enver View critical components, let us look at the backup of the rest of the components. So VMware highly recommends implementing highly available storage for persona management and Synapse shares, or at least backing up those shares daily. Persona management sometimes can be considered as a critical um, share, and VMware highly recommends implementing highly available storage for persona management, especially if you're using persona in stateless desktop architecture. Transfer server can be backed up weekly, and secure server can be backed up monthly. All the ESX servers you can back up following vSphere infrastructure backup best practices. And finally, let us review the backup restore sequence for view. We are assuming our whole data center went down and we are restoring infrastructure in a secondary data center. First, we need to restore ESX servers and vSphere server. Once we have those running, we can go ahead and restore Active Directory server. Next, we will restore View Connection server, Transfer server, Synapse share, and Persona share. And finally, we can restore Secure server. Now our users can connect back to their virtual desktops. This concludes our session. You can find our partner solutions by following below links and make sure you check out VMware View Backup Best Practices. Thank you for listening and have a good day.